Hi, this is Michael Orl from MobileBaron.com and today we're going to look at the Motorola Zoom and the Apple iPad, see how they differ, how they're similar, and uh, which one's better for you. Now when you look at these two devices in terms of the display, they both have roughly the same size display when it comes to um, diagonal measurements. A 9.7 inch display on the iPad, it's a 10.1 inch display on the Motorola Zoom. Uh, the differences come in aspect ratio and pixels. So the Apple iPad has a it's like 768 by 1024, so it's a fairly conventional looking uh, display in terms of you know something you might see on a regular monitor. The Motorola Zoom on the other hand has a wide screen, it's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so that's 800 pixels by 1280, so uh, much closer and it can actually show 720p HD video natively without any kind of um, interpolation between the pixels or anything like that. Both of these displays right now are on maximum brightness setting. The display quality on the iPad is definitely better though. There's, there's just absolutely no doubt about that. The display on the Zoom is not bad. You know, it looks pretty nice. But it does not have the same kind of pop, you know, contrast or even viewing angle, I would say, as the iPad does. Really no comparison between the two. The iPad just definitely has the, the better display quality. Take a look at the rear of the devices and you notice that um, not much going on here in the back of the Apple iPad. It has this nice little logo, very beautiful design. Um, nice satin feel on the metal finish. But there's really not much going on here. Motorola, for its part, has the 5 megapixel HD capable camera, dual LED flash, a pair of speakers, and as well as the power button on the back. Also has a metal constructed body um, with a matte kind of satin finish. But the uh, Apple iPad definitely uh, resists fingerprints much better. This uh, Motorola still shows quite a bit of fingerprints in spite of the fact that it's not glossy. In terms of thinness of the design though, both are very, very close. Uh, Apple's iPad is about 13 millimeters thick at its thickest point here in the center, down here by the Apple logo. Motorola's design is much more consistent. Um, the edges are slightly tapered, but the back you know, is otherwise mostly flat and it measures 12.9 millimeters in thickness. Take a look at some of the controls. Let's first look at the iPad. See, we've got the three and a half millimeter headphone jack, power button on what we'll call the top edge since that's typically held in portrait mode, volume control, and a button that used to uh, lock the orientation but now is a mute button. Standard Apple port on the bottom, speaker grill, and nothing at all to see on the left hand edge. Motorola, for its part, on the bottom we've got the proprietary power port, some connectors for a dock for power, micro HDMI and micro USB. Uh, it's worth noting though that the micro USB cannot use, be used for charging. Volume controls on the left hand edge and up top here three and a half millimeter headphone jack and this is where the micro SD memory card will go. Um, it's not supported at the moment, we're expecting a future firmware release to fix that and as well as the LTE SIM card will go here for 4G connectivity. Another thing that the Motorola has in terms of hardware that the iPad lacks is the forward-facing camera right here. We've got a forward-facing 2 megapixel camera on the Honeycomb equipped zoom. No such camera on the iPad at this point, although we expect to see one off of a new model. To its credit though, Apple does have a hardware home button here, um, which I really like. I think it makes the device a lot easier just to just get back to the home screen by tapping on a physical button. My two and a half year old son understands that concept. It works well for him. The home button, which is on screen on the Honeycomb tablets, just isn't as obvious to users. So I'm going to give Apple the nod in that point there. One thing that will be important to any tablet purchaser will be applications, and here you have the Apple App Store and the Android Market. The thing with the App Store for Apple, there's over 300,000 apps in general, including iPhone, and 60,000 of them are native iPad apps. Well, we've got well over 100,000 Android applications right now. That's what we've got in terms of native Honeycomb tablet aware applications. So, Android has a really long way to come. But you know, considering that this device just came out days ago, you know, obviously we can't expect uh, 20,000 apps right off the bat. Be interesting to see what kind of developer support the Honeycomb tablets get, though. In terms of usability, 
Uh, I'd probably have to give the, net, the nod to the App Store. It's smoother to run. This new Android market, which I think is um, fairly visually appealing, just as can be a little bit confusing at times in terms of you know what's going on when you're installing. You know, for example, this says download instead of install. Sometimes you'll see it says install. I don't understand why that is. And then of course, there's this problem. And this leads me to another point. In terms of stability, the Apple iPad is rock solid. Um, very, very few crashes. We've had this thing for almost a year now and it's really a very stable device. Honeycomb, on the other hand, has not been stable. I've been using it only a few days and I, I don't have enough fingers to count the number of times that applications have crashed on me. Uh, it just just doesn't have the stability there. So obviously this is very much a 1.0 release. And so in terms of stability and in terms of number of apps, Apple is still way ahead of the game. But before you think this is going to turn into an Apple love fest, um, what can't you do with the iPad? Customize it. Sure, you can rearrange icons and create folders and um, you know things that are very visually appealing like that. The problem is, this is what you have. You can rearrange them any way you want. That's what you get. On Android, on the other hand, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, widgets and things you can put on screen here. Move things around, move them wherever you want. Nice scrolling widgets for bookmarks here. This is a you know Twidroid, um feed. You can put applications on here as well, and naturally, you can rearrange them as you like. There's folder support, everything like that. But there's a lot of other things you can do as well. Um, take a look at all these widgets that we've got here. So far, the ones you're seeing up front here, these are native Honeycomb widgets, uh, such as weather from AccuWeather, clock, uh, calendar. Let's just toss, toss a calendar in here. There's the calendar. Very easy to do. You can modify it as you like. Scrolling widgets. You can flip through cards. Very cool. And of course you also have access to the legacy Android 2.x widgets that would be seen on a smartphone. They also work just fine. App shortcuts, very easy to add, change the wallpaper, and of course, more. Uh, just things for specific shortcuts, like you know, to a specific music playlist. All sorts of things that um, you can do to customize the device the way you want to use it the most. You, know, you can have this panel configured for entertainment, this could be work, this one could be anything else, travel. You can rearrange icons and create folders here on the iPad, but you can't really do anything else other than change the wallpaper does have nice folder support though. An important feature for any kind of device these days is going to be not only the web browser but text input. This is Apple's keyboard. It's quite nice. We'll search on our URL there. Quickly find a Google result. Load the page. I'll go to the full site instead of the uh, WebKit optimized version and everything comes up pretty well. Very fast, still loading, everything's interactive. Really quite nice. Do the same thing here so you can take a look at the Android keyboard. Very similar in terms of the way it works. Browser responds similarly. Of course, this can, both devices can work in landscape or portrait mode. Uh, the default orientation, just because of the button here, is portrait for iPad. Definitely a landscape device here in Motorola's Zoom. Doesn't quite feel as snappy in terms of the animations, but in general, the browser works pretty well. Both of these devices, however, are lacking flash support at this point. The difference is you're going to see flash support in this within a few weeks according to Adobe. Also, features you won't find when you're on the iPad is tabbed browsing. Of 
course you can open multiple windows here on the iPad but they're not as easy to manage because there's no tabs so you can quickly move back and forth here which is really quite nice another difference is when you have the zoom in your hands and you're holding it it's a lot easier to enter text with just your thumbs here this is easy to type on works quite well a little bit more of a stretch here now, I can do it I'm a guy with fairly large hands here but if you're a smaller person you're gonna have a little bit more trouble you know typing with your thumbs here also notice that there's a lot of space between the edge of the device and the edge of the display so in terms of uh, two-handed typing here on screen the zoom is much better for typing I would have to give the nod to Apple's iPad though in terms of accuracy both of these devices have the ability to play videos um, photo management everything like that really good YouTube clients all that kind of stuff one thing that the Zoom does offer though is a dual core 1 gigahertz processor this thing is really really fast you're not seeing it in a lot of applications uh, taking advantage of it right now but when it comes to some of the high-end gaming um, such as Gun Brothers or even Tank Hero the dual core processor really shines here battery life too too hard to tell right now it's a bit early iPad seems to have a slight edge but we're using a Wi-Fi only model here and this is a 3G model with the zoom so uh, the zoom is running at a disadvantage just on being a 3G network I, I'm gonna guess that the battery life is very similar uh, Motorola claims 10 hour of video watching here on the zoom so we'll see which device is for you depends on what you want if you're a power user you know you can work your way around a u user interface find out what you want to do you know the Android device has much more customization um, much more I guess powerful applications I would say uh, built-in multitasking and a lot of good functionality problem is it's very very new uh, a little bit unstable anybody can use an Apple iPad you can hand this to your grandmother and she's gonna figure it out within a few minutes it's that simple it's that consistent and um, now that we finally have a working task switcher in it it's pretty viable for doing a lot of different things so which one you like comes down to uh, money the zoom's quite expensive uh, it's not available in a Wi-Fi only version but it has a higher res screen, you know, faster processor, faster RAM, a lot of things going for it, and expandability in 4G data as well. Things you're not going to find on the current generation of the iPad. We'll have to see what Apple unveils with the next gen, though. So there you have it. It's a quick look at some of the differences and similarities between the Motorola Zoom and the Apple iPad. I'm Michael Orl from MobileBurn.com.